We turn now to Saeed Khan for more on the Israel-Gaza conflict. He's an associate professor at Wayne State University, focusing on Near East and Asian studies. Professor, thanks for joining our program today. Thank you for having me. Well, let's first start with uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and what he said today. He uh, opposes the idea of the Palestinian Authority retaking control of the Gaza Strip after this conflict ends. But that goes, of course, against the calls from the Western world as well as many Arab countries. So what do you make of this? Well, I thought it was interesting that in his statement he linked ha Hamas to ISIS. So there's a sign of desperation in Prime Minister Netanyahu's rhetoric. Uh, he recognizes that he's uh, extremely unpopular, not only at home, but certainly on the international uh, stage, as far as not just the tactics, but the severity by which he's uh, conducting the Gaza operation. He is trying to also then court some favor and uh, perhaps even try to expand those who would be receptive to his message. Thus far, it seems as though on the world stage, the United States uh, the U.K. and Australia are standing uh, with Israel, but uh, few and far between past that. He has uh, placed himself at odds with Secretary of State uh, Antony Blinken and American President uh, Joe Biden, who have said that there should be no uh, reoccupation of Gaza, which I don't think that's really what uh, uh, Netanyahu is planning either. Uh, but having this kind of a security cordon uh, that would be uh, indefinite, is certainly something uh, that he's looking at. I think he recognizes uh, that if the Palestinian Authority were to come into Gaza, then there would be more calls for a two-state solution because the PA would be both in the West Bank and in Gaza and would be in a position then to at least thwart what uh, the Israeli government has uh, used as an excuse for quite some time, saying that there is no stability, uh, there is no moderation. Uh, within the Palestinian uh, governing system. Professor, you touched on a point for my second question. Uh, he has said Israel will have overall security responsibility for the Gaza Strip for an indefinite period, as he mentioned, but he hasn't yet been specific about how that is going to work. How do you see that playing out, if it does? Well, this has also been uh, confirmed by Benny Gans, who is part of the War Council uh, in the Israeli government right now, and I suppose this is nothing new. The status of uh, Gaza, the status of the Palestinian territories, has always been rather ambiguous when it comes to the Israeli government. Uh, there are a lot of allegations that uh, the government simply has been kicking the proverbial can down the road for years, maybe even decades, when it comes to trying to move towards some kind of autonomy for the, uh, the Palestinian people. And here you see then there's a, uh, quite a chasm. Uh, between talk of peace uh, without necessarily talk of moving past peace, which would, uh, of course, be within the language of, uh, of an independent Palestinian state. Despite the efforts that are being made uh, regarding uh, calls for a two-state solution on the international stage, uh, that does not seem to be something that at least this government in Israel is, uh, is willing to bargain. Professor, I want to talk about the, the chances of this conflict spreading further into the region. Uh, we've already seen strikes on Israel from Hezbollah in Lebanon, as well as the Yemen, uh, Yemen's Houthis. Uh, what are the prospects of, of this uh, conflict expanding, do you think? It seems unlikely that it will. Uh, last week, uh, the head of uh, Hezbollah, uh, Hassan Nasrallah, uh, made a very nuanced statement to try to say that we will essentially be an irritant to uh, Israel on the northern uh, border of, uh, of Israel, southern Lebanon, but no calls for something that is uh, going to be more penetrating than that. Yes, there have been uh, missiles from Yemen. Yes, there have been missiles even from Syria. But it seems as though if there are efforts to try to draw Iran into the conflict, Iran is a rather cool customer. Uh, it is not willing to accept that gambit. Uh, and also, it seems as though Israel, uh, at least the military establishment in Israel, recognizes that fighting a multi-front war would really be disastrous. Uh, 2006 still looms very heavily within the Israeli imagination, uh, a war that uh, was in uh, Israel uh, uh, argued to be fought to a stalemate. Uh, but most uh, prognosticators and most pundits say that Hezbollah actually did win that war. Uh, Israel does not like to have defeats when it comes to its military. It certainly likes to project its military and its entire intelligence and security services as being invincible. 
uh, October 7th showed that that was probably not the case. And anything which might then uh, be seen as potentially even further harmful to that, uh, that myth, if you will, uh, is something that Israel does not want to countenance. Very quickly, Professor, uh, we want to talk about the humanitarian situation, of course, that continues to deteriorate in Gaza. Uh, could growing international pressure uh, sway, do you think, Netanyahu for more humanitarian pauses beyond what he has already committed to, do you think? Uh, probably not, but this isn't really about humanitarian pauses. It seems as though there would have to be a greater insistence and even demand on Netanyahu to make a distinction between the uh, invasion in the north and certainly the pummeling of the north and in some cases in the south to allow for unfettered humanitarian aid. As, uh, as your news item said already, uh, hospitals are shut down. There's no oxygen. Uh, babies and in incubators are dying. And people seem to forget that there is an entire coastline uh, with the Mediterranean. And if the international community was really serious, then arguably they could put pressure on Netanyahu to allow sea-based uh, humanitarian aid to reach uh, the civilian population, which desperately needs it. Saeed Khan with Wayne State University. We appreciate your insight.